We're going to learn about the concept of love and two levels of love, but not today. Um, today we're going to continue with the idea of fear slash awe and awesome. What is truly awesome? And what is truly awesome? So what we have learned till now from chapter 42 is the concept of fear being perceived, which creates a fear. I think uh, someone the other day gave a, you know, when a police car is right behind you, you have a fear, like immediately, <gasps> right? And that changes your behavior. What do you do? You slow down your car if you've been speeding. And even if you're not speeding, you just, in, you, know, you, you do that in, instinctually, right? Now, after that, maybe you have the thought of the fear of punishment. Maybe you're going to get caught or this or that, right? So that's not part of the concept of fear here. It's not fear of punishment from God, but it's just fear of the presence that that should shape and mold our behavior. And as we also spoke about that, not only God sees us, but we see God. And we have to habituate to be able to look at the world around us, nature, and to recognize that that's a lavush, a garment that's covering over on the true reality of God's presence. This idea, oh, and, and as we explained that the bottom line was in fear is just acceptance of the yoke of heaven. God is my king. I am his servant. I am here to do what he needs of me. That's something we can access at all time. We have that capability. So with this, the other uh, quotes from our sages in, in the in Pirkei Avot, in uh, chapter 3, in the Ethics of Our Fathers, and says, if there is no fear, there is no wisdom. So this is the concept of fear that precedes wisdom, Torah learning, that we're doing right now. In other words, um, Torah learning that we're doing right now has to have, should have, a basic tenant of fear, which is, I'm here to serve. How am I serving right now? through learning your Torah, the, your divine wisdom. That's how I'm serving right now. Or if I understand the greatness of Torah, so then that brings me to a sense of, wow, you know, it, it, the greatness of it, or the presence, or actually, as the Alter Rebbe explains over here, if we were to contemplate about the greatness of God, how God fills the world, right? And as we explained before, remember, everything in this world, there's a physical reality to it, but he is the inner truth of it, the inner vitality of everything of this world. The Alter Rebbe explains that that is called Bittel Hayesh. Bittel Hayesh translated would be the, the subjugation or nullification of something. In other words, when I look at um, uh, at, at the sun and the moon and I look at the celestial beings and I look at the Grand Canyon or I look at whatever physical reality, right? My first reaction, it's a something. But then when I contemplate about it, I come to reality that it's really nothing. Really, it is completely nullified to the vitality that God animates it. This is the lower level that's called nullifying something. There's a something to begin with. What is that something? A reality that I perceive. What's that reality? Something physical or something created. Even if it's on the spiritual world, it's a created being. So I perceive that there's a reality to the createdness of it. But then when I think deeper into it, what is its true reality? Nothing else but God. So that is called a lower level of fear because you're starting with the fact of something, right? And, there, and then from there, I need to come to realize that that, you know, that that fact is in fact a different reality, God's presence that is, um, that is nullifying or, or is its true reality. So I'm starting with something external though. What's the external? The garment, the created being, a sense of it. And then through my meditation or thoughts about it, I come to recognizing 
that this is completely you know nullified because it's the divine force of god that animates it that gives it existence right just as again my soul animates my body to give it life that is the gateway to performing a mitzvah and to study torah that lower level of fear right because what is that lower level fear doing it's now allowing me to engage in torah and mitzvahs in a different way without that i might do it out of road without that i might do it out of fear of punishment without that i might do it um you know for self-aggrandizement you know hey makes me you know makes me look good or you know people uh, honor me because i'm such a torah scholar and da 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 right so we need this prior to our mitzvah bef- uh, before our study of torah in order that we frame it and do it in the right you know and, and with the right kavan with the right intent and that's what we spoke about till now now the altar ever says there's a higher level of fear which is more awe awesome what's truly awesome what is really awesome so what's really awesome right is when you're in presence of someone who's awesome like a holy righteous person like the Rebbe what's the difference between being in the presence of a king I don't know if anybody's British here and uh, you know presence of the Queen of England her husband Prince Philip who just passed away so good time to bring it up right being in the presence of you know of a king but and and the truth is that's probably not the best metaphor but maybe uh, you know Henry the eighth uh, or uh, you know any other king from bygone days that were you know who were true you know rulers this is a you know it's a figurehead uh, so it doesn't have the true sense of what it means kingship What's the difference of be to being in the presence of the king or in the presence of a holy person? The fear you have of the king is the fear of their rulership, how that they rule and rule over you, right? In other words, it's not fear about the essence of the king and the um, personal greatness of the king, but it's the power of the king that they yield that's the fear there is but when you stand before truly a holy person there's also a sense of fear but here it's more awesome awesomeness that you are sensing because the 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 trepidation and trepidation of of punishment it's not of the rulership of this holy person but it's because of the essence of who they are. They are awesome, holy, righteous people. And that awesomeness of who they are when you stand before them, right? Because of their outstanding being. King, it's not because they're outstanding being. It's the rulership, the rule that they have, the power that they yield. The holy, righteous person, it is for who they are. When you stand in front of such a person, you feel their greatness and you feel, not because they make you feel this way, and that's very, this is a very important point, you feel your smallness. Smallness that you are, not that, you're in, that you are worthless and insignificant, but you sense you are nothing. They are, wow. That is the inner fear that derives from the inner aspects of God in this world. That's a metaphor I just gave. What's the metaphor? That there's a concept that's called bitl bimitsias, that there is only a reality of God, not that there is a world, not that there are stars and constellation and you think and perceive that God animates it and he's the true reality. No, this is that there's nothing else but God. There is, to begin with, not a created thing. All there is is creator all there is is the creator this is a much this is awesome this is probably something we will not achieve 
um, in our relationship with God. Because it is by truly appreciating the, um, the nullity of everything. And this is the idea, if there is no wisdom, there is no fear. Here, wisdom means the power, in, in Hebrew, chachma, koachma, the power of nullity, of, not, of me being nothing. And all I sense is the presence and the realness of God. Um, this comes, this kind of, uh, of wisdom, um, and this comes after our fulfillment of Torah and mitzvahs. This is a much higher and much more profound sense of, uh, of fear or awesomeness, right? That the, there is no existence. There's just a nullity of everything before God. Um, it's like the ray of sun within the sun. The ray of sun out of the sun has a, a reality. It's a ray of sun, but within the sun, it has no reality. Likewise, that is the notion of the of creation that has no reality but God. This is a very lofty level that I don't believe we're going to get there too quickly. And that's okay. We need to be aware of it. Uh, holy or righteous people have that. That they are just completely no reality, but just a reflection of the divine. That's how they sense their being. That there's that they are, and they there's not there's not even a consciousness of that. By the way, there's just the reality of that. Because the consciousness of that means that there's a something that's being conscious of. There's no consciousness of this. You, that person is just, and that's a holy righteous person comes from the world of Atsilas. That is beyond. Um, but that is the higher level of awesomeness. Um, again, extremely powerful. Is that clear? I hope. Any questions or any comments on, on this idea? Yes, yeah, so these awesome people, are they like just vessels speaking through their bodies, but like messengers? Um, I'm, this, I'm, repeat that, I'm not clear on what you just said. Sorry, say that again, Vilma. So these righteous people that reflect, you know, the essence of God. Right. When they speak, are they speaking as vessels, as messengers of God? Absolutely. But they're not always aware of it. Is that what you're saying? It's. It, 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 I guess it's beyond an awareness. It, 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 it's. Awareness means I am. I am, and I am a vessel, which that's something we are, can be. This is beyond that. This is, you just are. That's true being. And that's the so right is truth. This, is this true beingness always there, or is it just sometimes there? I don't know. I'm, I'm so distant from this, I can't answer you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't answer that question. That's a good, excellent question, but I don't know how to answer that at all. Uh, let me go here to Facebook, but thank you, Vilma. That's beyond my pay grade, sorry. Um, so Daisy says, from Jerusalem, we understand the greatness of Torah, but to understand and see God is impossible, isn't it? We submit to him because we nullify to him. Holy people are awesome are incredible, but we can't compare him to God, who is the creator of everything, even the creator of tzaddikim. That's true. Um, of course, God is, you know, um, that's all they, the tzaddikim, the righteous people are sensing, is only that they are, I mean, again, this higher level, they're not even sensing they are, they just are. <laughs> it's a kind of, you know, hard thing to 
to express because bitl b'mitziyut means nullifying that there is no thing. Like, you know, to nullificate that the first level was there's something, but what is the true reality of that something? Is God. This is saying there's nothing. It's just God. Right? So there's nothing to begin with, even to the degree that there is no even self-awareness. Because self-awareness means, oh, there's, there's the self there that's aware, that's already something. This is far and above beyond that. Um, and I guess we're going to have to let that digest and maybe we can you know, come up with... <laughs> Um, Denise, is that we feel more of an unconscious connection and awe of an inner essence? This is a uh, this is like a very high level that you get to after you've worked on yourself for you know many many years on the lower levels, and then you finally uh, have achieved that, and um, and and it's not like even you know probably out of a humility you might not even sense it. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm talking out of my I, I don't know. But Daisy, what you're saying here, um, 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 we understand the greatness of Torah, but they understand that we can understand the greatness of God within creation. Right? When we understand God is crea the creative power. The next second part of Tanya um, will be dealing with that, about the power of creator within creation. And Shayich of Emunah will be dealing on understanding how the Word of God animates and, you know, going to go into very, um, very detailed understanding of what that means. And then we can meditate and contemplate upon that and then have an awareness of God within creation. Absolutely, we can do that. Um, uh, by the way, if anybody can share, I know now that, that would be great. Andrew does... Our animalistic soul block our seeing God. Um, that prayer and mitzvahs help unblock. Very good. Yes, Andrew. Our animal soul, right, is um, definitely blocking our capability of um, connecting and having that perception. And therefore, the more mitzvahs we do, the more refinement we create. But it's not enough the act of the mitzvah. We need to have the mindfulness that we're talking about over here in, you know, in the various ma uh, manners that we've been speaking about. So it's the mitzvahs helped to unblock it and prayer helped to unblock it with the right intent. Not, right? Not just... Um, who? Okay, Daisy, who knows? So one second. Actually, Denise first uh, sits here first. But does it affect more our unconsciously uh, unconsciousness of the soul? Um, and Denise is asking, even if it is at a lower level, definitely uh, subconsciously we're being affected by it. Absolutely. Um, let you know. Let's work on the lower level. The higher level, we're not. Uh, the Alter Rebbe only spoke about it that we should be able to appreciate that whatever we accomplish on the lower level of, of fear, there's so much more to grow. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't think that that's something that we should be working on right now. Uh, Daisy, who knows when we will feel him really? So it's not about feeling him necessarily. It's about an awareness. The lower level of fear is meditating and thinking upon the world around us and understanding that God fills it just as my soul fills my body. You know, we get that, right? We appreciate that. We're not just a bunch of neurons and, you know, uh, uh, that are messages that are being sent from the brain, but it's we believe that we have a soul and that soul fills my body and animates it. So likewise, God fills the world and animates it. So we can have that awareness. We can habituate ourselves to see the world that way. Right, that is the lower level. That's not awesome, you know. Truth be said, that's pretty awesome if we do that <laughs> between us. <laughs> that's truly awesome if we do that. Now, De uh, Daniel, is awareness the beginning of being? Yes. 
Linda says, I know now that the higher level of fear is feeling that there is only a reality of God, nothing else but him. Excellent. Thank you very much. Liba. Excellent. Okay. Anybody else? Something to share? Another thought? Vilma, do you have something? Or Marcy, Sina? Uh, oh, what? Instagram. I didn't notice any questions. Is there any question? Put a question mark before. Ask your question so I could um, recognize that it's a question. So, I have a statement. Like, I believe that all humans are very sacred and we have this great potential to be as holy as we want to be with great effort and see those things that our senses um, may not perceive. But like you said, live with the awareness that there is more than what we see, that our soul that we don't see is very real, that God and uh, the fact that our souls are connected is also real. Even though we may not see it, there's a sense of it, especially when we are around other people, that hearts connect, that, that energy changes, especially with people of faith, particularly. Right. So, um, absolutely. And that's the idea to habituate ourselves, because that's the faith because that's part of our soul. It's there. We have the craft, we have the talent, and uh, we just need to be able to uh, work that through. And that is the, um, yeah, again, the lower level, um, and uh, as we explained, the higher level. So what we've concluded now is the two levels of fear slash awe uh, tomorrow we're going to get into love the concept of love two levels of love a higher level and a lower level um we will begin that tomorrow uh, we'll only begin it and we'll continue because there's a lot to be said about that all right folks uh, oh i see one other things ken what level do you think we are on now when we are in Egypt on the 49th level. So we're, uh, you know, um, so be it that we should at minimally recognize that we are here to serve and not be served. We are servants of, of God is our king. And God is a king, right? This is fear. Love will be speaking about God as our father and we're a child, right? That, that's love. But fear is the idea of a, a king, and we're here to serve, uh, which means whatever you need from me, God, I'm there, whatever it is. It could be a menial, simple thing. It could be a colossal, you know, uh, over the moon thing. Whatever it is that you need from me, that's what I'm ready to do. We can access that at any time. That is before you do any mitzvah. That's before you study Torah. That notion needs to be, that awareness we need to have. Then, we, then when we do the mitzvah, we're okay. Now, the next level is that I have an innate, natural, um, the innate love of my soul that I attune to, that I perceive the presence of God, that he's looking. The higher level is that I understand that intellectually, and that feeds even my heart. That even feeds my heart. That I'm able to, right? Another level is that not only do I, is God looking at me and seeing if I actually serving him to the best of my capability, right? Not for the punishment. We have to remember that's not the point. Not for the punishment. But for the connection, for the deeper connection that we can make. Because that's what God wants, that relationship. And then there is being able to perceive God in the world around me. That what I see the world is only a parable. It's only a metaphor. It's nothing else but a metaphor for one thing. Seeing God in all different various ways. And perceiving that. And therefore having a sense of respect you know you, you have a much greater respect um, a beautiful story that's told 
the Rebbe Rashab Fifth Lubavitch Rebbe, with uh, his son who was 11 years old nearly, or maybe 10 years old. And they were walking in the field on a beautiful summer day. And uh, he's speaking about the presence of God to his 10, 11 year old son. And, you know, in Hasidic terms, like what we're learning over here. He became the sixth Lubavitch Rebbe, the son that he's speaking to. So we're talking about a very lofty soul. And so they, there's a quiet spell that we're meditating upon, you know, the thoughts that were discussed. And the the, the, uh, the 11 year old boy, Rabbi Yisav Yitzchak, takes a leaf and, from a tree and rips it off and crumbles it in, in thought. And his father was aghast. Like, like we're, we're talking about the presence of God. How is it that you could take a leaf and just root, uproot it from its source of life and, you know, just crumble it? Uh, as a kid, or a different kind of kid that we, than we've ever been. Um, and, and by the story we see, you know, kind of lofty soul that even at that age, to be aware that there's a leaf that is created by God and being animated by God, and therefore don't just rip it off because it happens to be there and you, something you could use. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't mow your lawn, you should mow your lawn and you should trim your hedges because that's a, uh, you know, beautifying God's garden. But just to do it wantonly because it just happens to be there, you know, and maybe it helped him in his concentration, I don't know, whatever. But his father said no. In other words, when we perceive that the world is not just a, it's not a leaf, it's not a leaf, it's God animating it. We perceive it outwardly as a leaf. That's what we're perceiving outwardly. But what is it? It's God animating it, his word. So when we think about that, obviously we're gonna behave differently in the world. Now, I don't want to get into pol uh, political things here about, you know, what does that mean, saving the planet and so on and so forth. That's not the point here at all. Um, and we shouldn't make that because that's a, that's already beyond uh, this discussion over here. Um, uh, I, that's not, you know, from one leaf. To, therefore, well, we, we shouldn't cut down trees. Um, um, that's not the point at all that I'm saying over here. I want to make, make sure that we don't go there. Um, it's about an awareness and and the truth is you know that that's probably the most important thing we're such a consumer society and wasteful society um, that um, we shouldn't be wasting because it's God who's animating and creating it, all of this that doesn't mean we shouldn't be using a lot of things you know but we should be using it with that awareness that it's serving a higher purpose because it is animated by that higher purpose. All right. Um, uh, let me just one second. By the way, I tried to put in the link and, and, and Facebook's not allowing me to put in a link for some reason. Andrew, could you try to put in the link for me of ChabadZichrein.com? Maybe you could do it, but I couldn't do it. If you could do that, that would be amazing. And Andrew, thank you. Um, that's for the uh, upcoming course on Mashiach that you're all invited to uh, to participate and to sign up for um, in two weeks. So um, that. So then, then, then there's the final level of the awesomeness that there is no reality of a material world. There is no reality of creation, but just God. That will express itself that you are so attuned that there isn't even that self-awareness. You just are connected. Again, I'm far from that. <laughs> so wait, the rest of us don't think that you're there. Vilma, you wanted to share something. So, yeah, I've heard of this concept from Rabbi Friedman. Mm -hmm. He's also a Chabad rabbi that yes. I listen to, and he's really intense and funny too. He said that yeah. he's great. We 
are just creations. We don't need anything as creations. So if you think about something you create, the creation itself does not have any needs, but we ourselves think we do. And this world wants to convince us that we need all kinds of stuff. Right. That, you know, that distractions, all this stuff is necessary, which it's not. Uh, the only thing we that God needs from us is to serve him, to, you know, partner with him. Exactly. But most people, like, that's a hard thing to live your whole life around. And very holy people are aware of that. Yeah. It's a, a radical perspective from the point that, like, you can become really minimalist and, like you said, conserve things and know that, you know, everything that you have, like, it comes from God. Right. And so, therefore, you should cherish it and not be wasteful, and, you know, on and on. Yeah, so the, the, the point is not so much, the point is about the awareness and using it for a higher purpose. And um, so, you know, um, does that mean uh, that you don't use uh, paper plates because of that? No, it doesn't mean that. It means an awareness that it's for a higher purpose. That's what it means. So uh, that's why I don't want to get into the politics of this because there is a political angle to this and that that's not, you know, at all. Oh, no. Right. No, no. Right. I, I'm very aware that yeah. people have political angles to everything, but no. Right. Not yeah, yeah. Not, yeah, yeah. Not exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, thank you, Vilma. Let me just uh, over here. Um, so Denise is asking, are our actions to rectify that rectify during the counting of the Omer bring us to uh, to more awareness? Well, yeah, when you're counting the Omer and you know what the day is and you know the the meaning of that, that's an awareness, absolutely. Uh, Denise, yes, uh, tonight, by the way, I give a class every Sunday night on the Parsha. You're welcome to join. You can only get it on Zoom or uh, at Chabad Zuchrein uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Facebook page. Um, I've mentioned many times before, please uh, send me your, pri your email. Private message me your email um, so we can let you know of all of the things that are fit to print and to talk about <laughs> in upcoming things that are going on. Um, Yes, thank you for reminding me about that. So tonight, 6.30. And the Zoom link is 770-770-6085. I put it there without the, um, without the, the, the link, but just to, you know, to join, you'll be able to do it that way. Someone can put it with the link, that's even better. Okay. Uh, Chabad Zichrein Kadeshim. If you want to find me on website on the website, it's Chabad Zichrein, Z I C H R O N dot com. And you can uh, find there. You, um, uh, YouTube. Please sign up on the YouTube station. That is Tanya Rabbi. Instagram, it's the Tanya Rabbi. Everywhere else, it's Tanya Rabbi. All right, all right, folks. Very good. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zuchar and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining.